Imagine you're a bird, a crow living somewhere near Australia, New, New Caledonia, and uh, you enjoy eating beetles and spiders. And the only way for you to get to those beetles and spiders, because they hide in tree branches, is to find a twig that you put in your mouth, and then you hook the beetles and the spiders, take them out, and then you can eat them. That sounds like a simple idea, but actually that means that crows use tools to get to their food. And we used to think that human beings and maybe our cousins, the primates, were the only animals able to use tools and make tools. And when we started studying crows, we found out that actually twigs were only the first step because then they started figuring out that a hooked twig could be a better tool for finding beetles. And then they started using a first twig on a second twig to make a better hook twig. And basically, they were developing sophisticated tools to get to their food. So why am I talking about crows and twigs? Well, because they remind us that we're not the only ones with tools. They remind us to look at nature and see if we can find things that are similar in other animals or different in other animals and try to understand how that, affect our, how that affects our perception of the world. And this is the question that I want to ask you today, is why do we think that human beings are so special? And maybe more fundamentally, why do we think we're so much better than other species? Now, that may sound like a strange question. Uh, strange questions are my job. I'm a philosopher, and philosophers are interested and have been interested for over 2,000 years in asking big questions about meaning of life, the nature of human experience, understanding what is justice, what is friendship, tough questions that make a lot of sense once you start thinking about them because they improve your existence, but that at first gloss just make your life more complicated. And I'm a philosopher of biology, so I use biology to see how we can better understand these big questions thanks to biological examples, and then hopefully get back to biology and help biologists do their work. So you may think, you know, twigs, great, but that doesn't change my view of my superiority as a species. Well, it should, but I'm gonna go through a few examples to try to tell you, to, to have you think about why do we think we're so special? And hopefully at the end, you won't be as convinced as you may have been at the uh, beginning of this talk. So if twigs don't convince you because say, well, that's a tool, but that's a simple tool. Human beings, we have engineering. We can build big things and other species can't do that. Well, actually they can. Imagine you're a termite queen in Africa. That may be a bit more difficult to imagine because you're laying tens of thousands of eggs every single day and some of them become soldier termites and other become worker termites. And the workers, they're about half a centimeter long and they spend all day moving wood, mud, spit and making huge termite mounds that, like the ones you see uh, in and these termite mounds can reach heights of over seven meters. These are incredibly tall structures, and they serve as forts, uh, food storage, cooling stations. These are incredibly complex structures that little simple termites built. They do so without complex brains, without language, without technology. And to give you an idea of how special that is, Consider that if you're half a centimeter long and you're building seven meter high structures, that means you're building structures that are over a thousand times your height. To put that in perspective, the tallest human built building in Dubai is 800 meters tall. That means that human beings with all of their technology, all of their brains, all of their intelligence have managed to build a structure that is only, I mean, it's pretty impressive, but only 700 times 500 times, sorry, 500 times the height of a human being, whereas termites for a very long time have been building structures that are over a thousand times their height. Okay, that is incredibly impressive. 
So again, why do we think human beings are so special? And more importantly, why do we think that we're so much better than other species? I challenge you to identify any trait or behavior that humans have, and you'll find something similar in other species to some degree. Even art. Primates can paint. If you teach them the rudiments, you know, they can paint beautiful pictures. Elephants can do it, right? So even art can be done by animals. But basically, there's a more fundamental question. Even if, even if you could find something absolutely unique that only human beings could do, that wouldn't necessarily translate in us being better than other species. All species are unique in some sense. Think of a bat. A bat can, could move in this room using a natural sonar, echolocation, it's called. Dolphins have something similar as well. How impressive is that? We can't do that. Is that better or worse than us using a flashlight to move in this room? Think of a caterpillar. A caterpillar is basically a land-based creature, right? And by its own natural devices, it can transform itself into a butterfly and travel thousands of kilometers by flight. We can't do that. It doesn't mean it, the butterfly is better than we are. It's just different. Elephants can wash their backs blowing water out of their nose. Well, you could do that, but don't, like, don't, don't do it, please. So all of these examples basically remind us that we're different, but we're not that special, and we're not better than other species, or, to be more precise, that it's not obvious how we're better than other species. Yeah, but we've got science, we've got medicine, we can extend our lives thanks to technology. That is amazing, that is impressive. But other species have incredible, incredibly long lifespans and do so via very simple biological processes that don't require technology or intelligence or a complex social organization. Imagine for a moment that you're a tree. You're a quaking aspen tree. So the quaking aspen, that's my favorite tree by the way. So the quaking aspen, is very special because basically it looks like a birch tree and you can find them all over North America. There are some in northern Quebec and you can find them all the way down to the Pacific Northwest. And in the right conditions, instead of getting taller or instead of reproducing, it gets bigger by shooting out what are called runners underground and then a few meters away it starts growing and it looks like other individual trees. This looks like it's a forest, but it's actually a single organism. Think of this. This is a single organism. The biggest quaking aspen grove, they're called, is in Utah. It weighs over 6,000 tons. It has over 47,000 tree-like branches. These are branches that look like trees and it covers over 40 hectares, or about 100 acres. But what's most impressive, if that's not impressive enough, is that it has done so for over 100,000 years. This organism is over 100,000 years old. So we've got technology, we've got science, we've got medicine, we're awesome. Well, we may be awesome, but you know, other organisms have their own way of being awesome. And this is what I really want you to remember. It's not obvious that we're so special. And it's not obvious why we should take the way we live to imply that we're so much better than other species. Evolution has given many different ways of surviving and thriving in nature. Some do it via you know, building termite mounds, other by using twigs, other by having complex root systems. We do it thanks to our intelligence and skill, and great, that's great. But that doesn't make us better. It just makes us different. So the next time you, you cross or you see a crow or a termite or a quaking aspen tree, I want you to consider this important idea. It's not obvious that human beings are that special. 
and we're definitely not better than other species. Thank you.